rid of this, I, uh, we'll do one more thing for verification purposes. So, um, so we had that. We had that a is you know we showed that a is equal to q lambda q inverse, right? So. Um, leave myself some room here. Um, so I'm going to multiply, I want to multiply both of these equations on the right. So it, when you mu multiply matrices together, it matters. And if you multiply an equation by a scalar, you can multiply it on the right or the left. It doesn't matter. Right? But when you multiply matrices together, it does matter. If you multiply on the right on one side of the equation, you have to multiply on the right on the other side of the equation. Right? So I'm going to multiply on the right both sides of the equation by Q. But you know, as long as you follow those rules, the, the sort of normal rules from algebra work with matrices. I mean, you, you, you don't change anything if you multiply a, matri a matrix by a matrix, you know, a matrix equation by a matrix equation. As long as you you know, if you do it to one side of the equation, you do it to the other side of the equation in the same way. Okay, so uh, so I have this by multiplying on the right. Okay, so uh, who knows what a matrix time a matrix is inverse times itself is called the identity matrix, right? So this is the identity matrix. Right? And what's the identity matrix times another matrix? It's the same matrix, right? So if I take the identity matrix times lambda, it's just lambda. So, so then I have the simplified equation is AQ, Q lambda. Right? So now let's multiply on the left by Q inverse. So Q inverse A Q is equal to Q inverse Q lambda. Well, we've seen that before. That's I, right? Which means that Q inverse A Q is equal to lambda. Okay? Well, what was uh, special about lambda? Other than that, had it contained the, I mean, more more generically than that, it contained the eigenvalues. Well, it was a diagonal matrix, right? It was a diagonal matrix. So uh, this is a, a special property of a matrix of eigenvectors. Right? So if we take if we take any matrix of eigenvectors. You know, so we know, a, you know, Q is the eigenvectors of A. Right? If we perform this operation on it, it will diagonalize A. And this is, in fact, how we're going to use eigenvectors because it turns out that eigenvectors turn out to be the principal directions of the stress tensor, and the principal directions of the stress tensor we can measure. We can measure or infer right? in 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 you know in the context of, of wellbore say wellbore geomechanics. Right? We can measure or infer the principal directions, which are the eigenvalues of the stress tensor, and therefore we can then diagonalize the stress tensor and just work with the diagonal components. It turns out those are the ones that are usually the most important. Okay. And so just uh, as a, as a final, uh, before I uh, get rid of the Mathematica notebook, um, we'll just verify that that works, right? So I already have lambda and q up there defined, so uh, and uh, and a. So if I take, you know, there's a. Right? So if I multiply q dot a, or it's rather a inverse q dot a dot q. I get back a diagonal matrix with, with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. So it works. OK.
Okay. So that's eigenvalues, uh, you know, from a standpoint of linear algebra, and and really the whole sort of exercise into into solving a difference equation was really just an aside for what we're going to use it for. I just wanted to show you uh, another application. Uh, we're going to use it in the context of stress, so you'll see, you know, examples to follow in the context of stress, and that's where we're going with this. And we're almost done.